back. Welcome along to Transfer Talk. Jedin Fernandez is a Tottenham player. We will be speaking to a very famous Tottenham fan shortly. Remember, you can tweet the show at Sky Sports News. Use that hashtag Transfer Talk, and there's plenty of other ways to get in touch. Yeah, this is Transfer Talk, and as I mentioned, we are joined by a very special guest this lunchtime to talk all things Spurs. It is a Tottenham fan who isn't feeling blue about their new signing, Jedson Fernandez. He has got one love for the new man in charge, Jose Mourinho, my 16-year-old self, <laughs> Mr. Anthony Costa. Hello, you're all right. Yeah, I'd like to say, massive Spurs fan. Look at that there, look at that. Look at, look at that. that. I should have had Mourinho there. Anthony Costa joins us, massive, massive Tottenham fan, Tottenham Hotspur season ticket holder. It's been a very, very busy January. Could be a very busy January for Tottenham Hotspur. We'll be talking about that, but Joe will be talking Chelsea first. And how many concerts she came to? <laughs> <laughs> we weren't going to mention that till the end of the show, but thank you. Um, yeah, we are going to stick with the blue theme. We're going to kick things off by talking about Chelsea. Uh, unlikely to exercise the £40 million buyback option they have for Bournemouth defender Nathan Ake. And Mark, he's a player that you have raved about in the past. Are you surprised that Chelsea wouldn't want to exercise this option? Absolutely. Um, I've been quite public in my praise for Nathan Aki. He's a superb player. He's still very much not even in the prime of his footballing career. He's young. He's got so much quality. You've seen it when he was on loan at Watford. He did play for Chelsea a couple of times when he was there in his first spell. But since he's joined Bournemouth, he has been the mainstay at the back. He's been absolutely brilliant. Uh, he's developed as a player. He's really one of those players that kind of is de deceptive in, in the, his appearance. You look at him and you think, he's only 5'11", he's not the busy, biggest physically, but actually what he brings to the pitch is, is something else. And he's got a great leap on him, he's good in the air, he's very good defensively, he can stop across when he's playing at full-back, he can also play holding midfield. And when you look at the players that have been going in and around that region, you know, the likes of Virgil van Dijk uh, or, or De Ligt, you know, for sort of 60, 70, 80 million pounds, Harry Maguire, another one. For Chelsea to be able to exercise the option and get a player of that quality for £40 million, it does really surprise me in some respects. But at the end of the day, their philosophy has changed. They've got a new manager in place, Frank Lampard, and he obviously just doesn't fancy that Nathan right now fits into that setup. Yeah, we were talking a lot about that on Good Morning Transfers, just about this philosophy and perhaps the reasons why. And I guess with Chelsea not going to exercise this option, would you be surprised that another club wouldn't come in for him? You know, you're raving about it, Mark, so... It won't cost £40 million. Pounds. It'll cost arguably double that. I mean, let's be brutally honest, Nathan Aki is Bournemouth's best player, and without him, they're more likely to go down, which will cost them more than £80 million. Pounds. So there's no other club that can take Nathan Aki out of Bournemouth at the moment unless they turn up with wheelbarrows full of cash. Mm. We do know that he is on the radar of a number of other Premier League sides. You know, there are various teams that are looking for a centre-half and he is on that list. Manchester no... City being one of them. Absolutely, yeah. We've, we've reported the interest there from Pep Guardiola. They've said they're not going to be busy in this January transfer window, but he is a player that will be on the radar of a number of Premier League clubs and those in Europe as well because he is, he's top class. I'm really surprised, actually, that Chelsea don't want to exercise this option because they've actually been fairly short in the heart of defence, really, this season. We've seen Antonio Rudiger, Andreas Christensen. They've both suffered with injuries. Rudiger has kind of had an iffy season so far, I'd say. And Tamori, he's impressed, but he's still young. He's got a lot to learn. And then, obviously, Kurt Zuma, him, him as well. He's made a few mistakes as well. So I'm personally surprised that they don't want to exercise this option. But as we spoke about this morning, maybe Frank Lampard is happy what he's, with what he's got. He said he doesn't want to go out and make signings just for the sake of it just because they can and just because it's January so that's probably in his thoughts as well. I, th I think you just have to think about Chelsea though when Chelsea did obviously make that that sell from to Bournemouth of Nathan Aki then they would have actually incorporated that buyback clause in for a reason and they will know that there's a limit on terms of that activation and when they can actually trigger it so as much as we're talking about the longevity and we're talking about the plans that Chelsea would have in terms of their philosophies, they still would understand that if they were to trigger that deal, then they would have to act probably sooner rather than later. Yeah. So it, uh, timing is important as well. And just one thing on Nathan Aki, I think it's really important to point out as well, his character. Yeah. He's a great professional. Mm -hmm. He's absolutely top class in that respect. If he's at Bournemouth on February the 1st or he's at another, another Premier League club or another club in Europe, his attitude will be the same. 
and if he's at Bournemouth, he will fight to keep them in the Premier League because that's the type of guy he is. Yeah, well, one of his teammates, Chelsea, have also been watching. Bournemouth's Callum Wilson. Uh, Chelsea have been watching him for the past 12 months but are unlikely to make a move for him. Uh, so if not Wilson, I guess the question is, Anton, where do you expect Chelsea to look? I think if they do sign anyone, They'll sign someone more as a kind of winger than a, the natural centre forward. They've got Batshuayi and they put a big price tag on him, so he probably won't be leaving in January. But the fact of the matter is, Pedro's out of favour, William's out of contract at the end of the season, Pulisic is currently injured. So it's that kind of, do they bring someone in now, get him used to the Chelsea setup, and then when William and Pedro move on in the summer, he's ready to go? And William might not move on in the summer. True, he, he says he wants to play till he's 40. Stay, exactly. yeah, yeah. You have both forgotten Callum hudson odoi I just I'm, think I'm you just... Him. He was getting like, there. I forgotten him. <laughs> OK, I'll let, well, I'll let no, you finish then. My point is, you know, if hudson odoi starts, I'm talking about the other three are pretty much backups to him, aren't they? So I don't think you can call Christian Pulisic in terms of with the transfer value that he came in and, and the way he's actually started in terms of adapting to the Premier League. I don't think you consider him a backup at this moment in time. Yeah. I think if you bring William into that equation as well, I think there's a rotation between them. I think it's Chelsea, I think it's Chelsea going to win the league next season. They'll have, they'll have a... They'll have someone they think has got a higher ceiling than Christian Pulisic coming in for, you know, for the start of the season. Yeah, and Mark, interested to get your perspective because Bournemouth is a club that you know well. How happy will Eddie Howe be with this news that Chelsea are not going after two of his really key players? I think it will be a big relief, to be honest. You know, when you're in a relegation dogfight, when things aren't going well, it's nine defeats in their last 11 Premier League games. It really has gone south for the club. Um, so to hear that there is a lack of interest from one of the big players in the Premier League in two of your key stars will be a welcome relief to Eddie Howe because the last thing he wants right now is to lose any of his key players, particularly Callum Wilson who can get the goals. Although he's not had a great season, we know he can find the back of the net and Nathan Aki who can stop them going in at the other end. They're te two, two of the Bournemouth's key, key players. But surely it works the other way as well, though, because if your players are playing really well, that's when the Premier League big dogs want to come in and, and fight to get your players. So actually, it's probably, yes, Eddie Howe will want to keep these players, but it also shows how... Not, or how, well, not, not how badly, but with Callum Wilson, he's not had a good season. They're just and having that's a dip why in form. he's not attracting attention. Yeah, they're just having a dip in form. But the good thing deal. about Eddie Howe and Bournemouth fans is they know that he is still a top class player. Yeah. He's not disappeared from being a good player overnight. He's just having a bad run. We've seen it with all of the players in the mm -hmm. Premier League over years. They have a little dodgy spell. They're just going for a dodgy spell. His England spell's up, up, up for grabs, isn't it? Danny Ings form, yeah. you know, and Harry Kane should be back for the Euros. I mean, at the moment, Callum well. Wilson isn't going to the Euros unless he starts storing, scoring goals. And the thing is, it just takes one game. Yeah, you know, true. Bournemouth have got Norwich Patrick. City, they've got Brighton in their next couple of Mark, matches. I, I could have sworn he that you could... watched the show earlier. I, I said <laughs> exactly the same thing earlier today. He is a man that scores in batches. He does. He always has historically. When he gets one, the confidence just goes through the roof. And I spoke to him earlier in, in the season in the AFL Cup and he was saying the same thing. Once I get one, that's just how I am as a person. It, the confidence just goes through the roof. And that's the mentality of most mm. strikers anyway. And that's what's great about football. We could be having a very different conversation this time next week if Bournemouth win two games and keep two clubs clean sheets and Callum Wilson scores six goals and suddenly yeah. we who love knows? it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, right, let's get more on that signing that was announced today. We confirmed it in Good Morning Transfers for you. That loan signing of Jedin Fernandez to Tottenham. Michael and Anthony, over to you guys. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to the Spurs Centre with <laughs> Anthony Costa. Panto's finished, so he's here on Sky <laughs> okay. Sports News. But massive, massive Spurs fan as well, aren't you, Ant? Yeah. Look, let's start on the first signing Spurs have made. Gedson Fernandez. Yes. We didn't know much about him right. before. But you're quite excited. Yeah, I'm excited because he's young, he's energetic, he's a light for light for Sissoko. Obviously, Sissoko's got a long injury layoff now. So we need bodies. We need bodies in that midfield. Um, it might take a bit of time to adapt to the Premier League, but I hope that he, uh, Mourinho gives him that chance, which I'm sure he will, to, to, to start, you know, start playing. We spoke, didn't we, about Mourinho being a grade A manager. Yep. Is this one of the examples where Fernandes says, I want to play for him? Yeah, absolutely. This is the whole point. What I was saying to all my friends out there, when we sign Mourinho uh, as manager, he's going to attract players, young or old. And it just goes to show this youngster, obviously Mourinho's probably been keeping an eye on him, being Portuguese. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. It's exciting times. But I think now let's, let's get the ball rolling and get some more players in. OK, Fernandes is in. Let's talk about someone who could be on the way out, Christian yep. Eriksen. Yeah. Now, there was a few groans last night, wasn't there? Mm -hmm. A few fans were unhappy with his performance against Liverpool. Yeah. Is it time? Is this January the time to say goodbye, or yeah. would you wait till the summer? No, I'd, I'd, I'd wave goodbye now. Bless you know, he's, he's he's been a good servant over the years. The last 18 months, he hasn't been as good as what we expect of him. Um, 
free kicks, corners, as we know, you know, sometimes he can't beat the first man and it's been a running joke. But um, I think now it's time for him to, to, to say goodbye to Spurs and, and move on and hopefully go on and, and win some things. So we understand there's the fees between... There's a bit of a disagreement between 10 yeah, and 20 million. Yeah, I'm a bit million. surprised it's quite low, but, isn't it? But, but, yeah, but I mean, obviously his, his contract runs out. Would you sort of take the money around 20 million and just move on? I would take the money and run now and just yes. reinvest into the squad, which we need. OK, finally, Go one on. player, Jan Vertonghen. Yes. Now... That's interesting. A bit of a mixed one here, but obviously, obviously his team, his Belgium team at Toby Oliveira has signed a new yeah. contract. Yeah. He's very versatile from what we've seen, central defence, left back. Stay or go? This I, I want him to stay. I want, I want that. Give him another year contract. I think he deserves it. He's been a good servant to the club. Um, him and Toby have obviously grown up together. They know each other inside out. But we need cover for him. We, need, we definitely need to invest in a de uh, defensive midfielder because sometimes we can be left exposed a little bit. And, you know, Jan, maybe he's not, not as quick as he was uh, two years ago on his legs. So let's get another left back in as well. Do you think he works well for Belgium as a left back because sometimes they've got so many yeah. good options for Belgium in that defensive midfield? Well, you've got all the different players from around the world. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So you've got the, the Felix lad, who's a great player. So he has got cover. But for me... Jan is, is better as in a two with, with Alderweireld next to him. OK, and for now, but Joe's got some more transfer news involving Tottenham Hotspur. Yes. Yeah, and actually, <laughs> you did say he is just to get some players in, so this might interest you. This is just some news into us in the last hour concerning Spurs. Uh, as we know, they've already signed Fernandez. Now they've been offered the chance to sign Porto striker Zé Luis on loan. Uh, he's one of a number of strikers Tottenham are considering following that injury to Harry Kane. Anton, just tell us, what do we know about the player? Zé Luis is a bit of an old-fashioned target man, to be really honest. Like he's been, he's played in Russia at Spartak Moscow. He's been at Porto a little, you know, six months or so now, and he's he's done quite well for them. Actually, he's done better than most people thought. But you know, it's, Spurs aren't getting a light for light replacement for Harry Kane here. They're getting more of a sort of Sebastian Allaire sort of target man kind of striker, to be brutally honest. Um, he's only ever scored ten goals once in his career, and he's 28 years of age. Wow. He's not the most prolific. He will bring others in. So, therefore, if he's a centre point in that, that attack, so much more pressure goes onto the midfielders around him to score the goals. Be interesting to see whether Mourinho thinks he fits the bill. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. We'll keep an eye on that one and let you know if there's any more development. Said, uh, do please keep on getting in touch. We'll have much more from Anthony Costa this hour. Keep your thoughts coming and use that hashtag transfer talk. And next up, we'll have a roundup of the day's stories. We'll also be talking all things Everton. Welcome back to Transfer Talk. Time now for the state of play. Chelsea are unlikely to exercise the £40 million buyback option they have for Bournemouth defender Nathan Aki. And staying with Chelsea, who have also been watching Callum Wilson for the past 12 months, but are now unlikely to sign the Bournemouth striker. Atletico Madrid executives are meeting with PSG over the transfer of striker Edison Cavani. Atletico are considering a move for Alexandre Lacazette if they cannot do a deal with the French champions. Watford have signed Argentinian winger Ignacio Pacetto on a four and a half year deal from Udinese. And Everton director of football Marcel Brands has confirmed the club are working on deals for Umar Nias and Cucu Martina to leave in this transfer window. And finally, Nuno Espirito Santo remains confident Wolves will land his transfer targets to boost their wafer-thin squad, with the club wanting a defender and a striker in the January window. Now, what a time it is to be at Shrewsbury Town. An FA Cup upset last night thanks to an 89th-minute winner. Saw the beat championship side Bristol City set up a fourth-round tie at home to Liverpool. I'm pleased to say Shrewsbury Town manager Sam Ricketts joins us now on the phone. Sam, thanks for joining us on Transfer Talk. Congratulations on the result last night. Uh, how were the celebrations? No, it's um, obviously very, very um, happy and exuberant in the dressing room, but uh, muted now as we get back to league, uh, league action this weekend. Oh, it's a very managerial response to that. I like that. What were you <laughs> feeling, though, when Aaron Pierre, your centre-back, picked up the ball from 25 yards with a minute to go and belted it? You must have been thinking, don't shoot, please. No, to be honest, we said, 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 uh, right, Liverpool obviously in the next round at the meadow. How is that going to feel coming up against such an impressive team? I think people are talking about the magic of the FA Cup. I mean, it's diminishing, but it's not like anyone that's truly. I think you you want to resound it. No, whether it be players, supporters, 
occasion and something which the FA Cup brings and is play against Liverpool um, unless it was for the FA Cup and just to treasure these moments is what we um, started playing football for to, um, to play against the best and test yourself against the best and now we've got the opportunity to do so. Sam, we're, we're going to have to let you go because that line is awful. It sounds like you're auditioning to be a Dalek, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, we'll try and get you on later in the show because I really want to talk to you because you've made a lot of Shrewsbury Town fans happy, including this one. So hopefully we'll speak to you later with the clearer line. Thanks, Sam. Yeah, absolutely. Stay with us. We will try and re-establish a, a better line with Sam because it would be really good to get his thoughts there. Um, in the meantime, let's go to Everton now. They've got four players out of contract at the end of June, meaning that they can, of course, agree deals with overseas clubs this January. Martin Stecklenburg, Leighton Baines, Kuko Martina and Umar Nias. We do know they're actively looking to sell Martina and Nias. Uh, but where should they be looking to strengthen, Alice? Well, I think first and foremost, they've really struggled in midfield this season. They've had a lot of injuries at Everton. Obviously, the injury to Andre Gomez and also to um, Bam Bamin as well. Now, Bamin was originally brought in to replace Idrissa Gay. That was back in summer when he left for PSG and Idrissa Gay was a huge loss to this Everton side. So, big shoes to fill and he came in and has got this really bad injury. Andre Gomez has returned to training but there's a difference between obviously returning to training and returning to, to match action. So, that's pretty much ruled him out for, for the majority of the season so far. Um, Angelotti says Everton will be going in to look for a central midfielder in January. So, he, he's actively looking, he's actively in the market. Up front as well, obviously, Cenk Tosson has left. He's joined Crystal Palace. And they have been lacking goals this season, haven't they? Moise Keane, he joined from Juventus back in summer. He hasn't even scored yet. Recently, his dad came out and said that moving to Everton was the worst move he's ever made. And he actually, I don't think he thanked his dad for that afterwards. Yeah. He, he, he wasn't too happy about that, but he'll need to be finding some form. Um, Alex Awobi, obviously, his move from Arsenal as well. He's struggling to find his feet at Everton. The one plus, I guess, is that Calvert-Lewin, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, um, is looking pretty good and Carlo Ancelotti has said how much he likes him and that he could be one of the, the top forwards in Europe. So they're, they're, they are look, there are some positions they're looking to, uh, to strengthen and not in the goalkeeping department, though. Um, he's said he's very happy with Jordan Pickford. I think the Kiko Martina story is probably the, one of the most unique ones as well because he is the kind of the epitome of modern football where one manager takes a preference to you and one manager doesn't. He's making that move from Southampton. It's like one manager can really see something into you and another manager, he's been kind of unfortunately been the scapegoat of managerial changes and now he's down in the pecking order. You think of Seamus Coleman, I mean Jabril Sidibe's there as well and probably they also fancy Mason Holgate in that right back position all ahead of him and he's kind of stuck on and his laurels kind of working out what's his next move at 30 years old but in his debut season he played 28 games but like I said managers have their own preferences. Yeah. Uh, Carl here has got in touch on Transfer Talk he says I'm an Everton fan we need a striker and a defender I think we should go in for Kurt Zuma and Charlie Austin that's what he thinks uh, Everton fans let us know who you want to target and Anton not great news financially for them yesterday just fill us in with that and the potential implications in this window. Yeah well they they announced their financial results yesterday, which shows a loss of more than £111 million. Now, that obviously isn't sustainable, but Everton insists they are on course with financial fair play regulations, so they won't see them, you know, docked points or, or maybe not be allowed to enter Europe. They're confident they can still fulfil the requirements. However, it does show that Everton, as kind of JD was, was suggesting to him, all these managerial changes and heavy investment means they've kind of got a bloated squad in some areas. They're trying to get rid of, as we said, you know, Kuka Martina, Umar Nias, Leighton Baines, Martin Stecklenburg are out of contract at the end of the season. There are other players on the fringes that maybe have played more this season because of injuries and lack of form, but they probably would, wouldn't mind getting rid of as well, if not now, then in the summer. So it's just going to be fascinating. It's not just the players they want in. And also they spent high. Will they get those values back for the players that they bought as well? That's, that's going to be interesting as well. They might have to take a couple of losses on a couple of players if they yeah. want to get rid of them. So it's going to be really interesting to see what Everton do from here. Yeah, it is. And Mark, it's obviously Carlo Ancelotti's first window as Everton boss. You've been looking a little bit at some of his previous work in the transfer market. Yeah, absolutely. I challenged the team to find me a manager in European football has signed more better players than <laughs> Carlo Ancelotti. Take a look at this. Wow. <laughs> Woo. We know he's been at some of the biggest sides in European football, but these are the players that Carlo Ancelotti has signed oh, yes, whilst the boss. Starting in goal, Edwin van der Sar, who he signed back in uh, 1999 at Juve. At Cafu at right back there. Nesta, Yapstam at AC Milan. Zambrotta as well, he signed him for AC Milan back in 2008. Then into midfield, Thiago Silva, Clarence Seydorf, again another 
AC Milan signing back in 2002. Tony Cruz was at uh, Real Madrid in 2014. And then look at my front three. <laughs> Ronaldinho, <laughs> Gareth Bale and Ronaldo. Ronaldinho, of course, going to AC Milan. Gareth Bale at Real Madrid. Um, and then up front, the original uh, Ronaldo. 2007 to AC Milan. That is a good 11, I think. Mm -hmm. However, <laughs> look at my bench. Your Carlo bench. Ancelotti signings that couldn't even make my starting 11. Kaka, Ibrahimovic, Rivaldo, David Luiz, James Rodriguez. This man has worked with some of the best talent in world football in the history of the game. Carlo Ancelotti knows how to sign a player, knows quality when he recognises it. Of course, he has been at some of the big clubs. I do, do respect that and understand that. But Everton fans, if he can just sign one gem in this window or a couple of gems in the summer, then who knows what can be achieved. But wow. Yeah, that's, that's, that is a list of players. You've sold him. Yeah, yeah, Everton fans yeah, yeah, will be yeah. hoping that a player that he signs at Everton will make it into that team and we'll be talking about it in years to come. Uh, right, I'm very pleased to say that we do have Sam Ricketts back on the line. So, Anton, let's get back to you. Sam, welcome back. Thanks for, thanks for rejoining us. <laughs> right. Thank you. There you go, that's better. Right, now, this is obviously a transfer show. It would be a miss me not to ask you about the business you're going to be up to this January. Are you looking to do any way looking to strengthen? Yeah. We're, we're, what we are, we're a really young group um, who've just come together with teams of players and myself. So I'm really pleased with everyone. But we also, like everyone, want to add a few bits of quality if we can to it. Um, it's going to be hard to do so. We run the club correctly. Um, so last night's win and the extra revenue that brings in certainly helps us. Um, you know, we only spend what we have. We don't put the club in. Um, um, you know, we, we spend what we have. So we, we never put the club's so future in doubt like, like super clubs do. So... Um, hopefully it might open a few more doors than would have been previously. Yeah, we've seen the likes of Sunderland with big names. Peter have just spent half a million pounds on a left-back. Do you think we'll see some serious money spent in League One this month? I think um, League One is, is a very uh, rich league for League One standards this year. I think there's eight, eight nine, ten sides which are, are really spending big. Um, sides which you wouldn't necessarily expect to pay big wages. Um, so it's, it's quite a hard league this year to recruit into. Like you said, you've got the Sunderlands, you've got the Boltons, Ipswiches, Portsmouths. Now, there's a lot of big sides there spending good money on, on wages and transfer fees. Right, I'm going to go back to the big game, the Liverpool game, the one that everyone's excited about. It's Ricketts versus Klopp. What is, <laughs> right, well, how are you going to go about doing what so many have failed and actually beat this man? Um, listen, they're a, a, an unbelievable team. Um, obviously, we're not sure what, uh, what players will come down with it, um, come down to, to play us, but... I think if you probably look at the Everton game more than any, more likely to be something like that, Which, in which case I think every team has, obviously they're unbelievably strong in, in certain departments, but you have to back yourselves in and try and find a few weaknesses and we're going to get chances in the game like you do in any game, but we might only get a, a couple. I and mean, if you do, and if it falls to that player, then you have to try and take those chances. I love that fighting talk. We're going to have chances. Confidence. Yes. That is what <laughs> yeah. we want to hear. That's what all Shrewsbury Town <laughs> fans want to hear, Sam. I love it. You have to go into every game trying to win it, certainly. Very true. Very true. I love it. Look, great luck. Uh, really hope the game goes well next Sunday. And obviously, the Fleetwood game this Saturday as well. I hope that goes well. Thanks for joining us, Sam. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Yeah, great to speak to Sam Ricketts there. He's smiling. Look at his face. I've never seen him so happy. <laughs> <laughs> he's even lost getting, his sleep. Yeah, he has. Lots of you getting in touch. We were talking <laughs> Everton just a moment ago. Uh, Kieran says, if Everton could sign to Curry from Watford, then I'm sure that would be a man-for-man -man replacement for Gay. Would strengthen their midfield and get game time comfortably. Let us know what you think. And next up, we will be back with Anthony Costa and Michael at the Skypad as they look at some of Tottenham's standout signings from over the years. Now, Anthony Costa's just checked his Twitter and you're <laughs> jumping around. I said, Absolutely. what are you jumping about? You... <laughs> it's been nine years in the making, Mike, mate. I've, you know, um, Sky Sports News have followed me on Twitter. <laughs> I've sung with Elton John and Stevie Wonder. Nowhere. <laughs> It's all about Sky Sports <laughs> dude. Oh, oh, you got paid last week. Right, you're here because yeah. you're a massive, massive Tottenham supporter. Yeah. Now, we've done you a nice little transfer playlist, well, okay? We You've pressed play on the first one. Your favourite transfers as a Tottenham fan, David Ginola. Obviously, it's going to bring a bit of arguments, but these are my, my personal favourites. David Ginola was, was great for Newcastle. And whenever I used to watch him play for Newcastle, I used to always think, I wonder if he'd ever come to Spurs or what would he be like in a Spurs shirt. And, and lo and behold, he came in 1997. 
Uh, we won the Worthington Cup with him and him taking his shirt off and having a beautiful six pack and everything. Yeah, absolute gentleman. And yeah, he, he's definitely up there for me. Unbelievable. Now, if you can press play here, here comes the next player in your playlist, Jürgen Klinsmann. Yeah, 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 now, do you remember that in 94? Absolutely. It was straight after the World Cup in 94. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and it was, it was pictured, he was pictured with Lord Sugar yeah. on his yacht. Um, and he just came and absolutely was unbelievable in the Premier League. And he also came back in 97 and he saved us from relegation. Yeah, they so were... I think he scored like four against Wimbledon at the time. Six two, yeah. They were dark, dark days. Dark days. Now, can I get you on to the next one, please, Ant? Dimitar Berbatov. What a striker what he a was. What a striker. He was brilliant. Yeah. Um, didn't know too much about him, but he came to Spurs and was just unbelievable. Him and Keane together were fantastic. Now, the next one, the next one in your choice, your playlist, if you play the next one, now, you watched this on Sky Sports News, I didn't was, you? I was watching the whole day, uh, you know, the transfer deadline day, and it was uh, Mr VDV himself, Rafa van der Vaart, was just unbelievable for us. He, he, you could tell he was a proper Spurs passion player, uh, especially playing against uh, them guys across the road from us. So, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he was brilliant. I loved every minute of him. Last but not least at all, if you can press play on the final one of your playlist... Da -da -da -da, Mr Gareth Bale himself. Gareth um, Bale. Obviously, we signed him as a youngster. I didn't know too much about him. Obviously, he was a good left-back for Southampton. And Mr Harry Redknapp transformed him into a world-beater and superstar that we see to this day. Hypothetically speaking, if he was available for transfer, would you, would you have him back? I'd go and pick him up from the airport myself. There you go, Gareth. There you go, Gareth. <laughs> He'll pick you up from the airport himself. <laughs> I've only got a smart car. There we go. That's, that... <laughs> That's the Spurs sense for now, Joe. <laughs> Yeah, and we actually just wanted to pick up a little bit on that because you said it might cause some debate and a few people here yeah. wondering about a few omissions yeah. there. And I know it is tricky, but Alice, you in particular were surprised yeah. not to see someone there. I can't believe you've not got Luka Modric in there. Uh, again, that's what I mean. But, but for me, yeah, it was, it was fantastic for us. But I'm talking about things, uh, players that meant something to me at that time. And I think they, I couldn't take away these two. But I, I know we didn't win a lot with them and stuff and they didn't transfer, transform Spurs, but... The way we signed Klinsman was just unbelievable at the time, and then David Ginola was just David Ginola. I mean, I can't take him out at all. So the emotional connection there. Yeah, there is an emotional because I'm, I'm old, you know. Well, what about? It's a heart back to a time when you had no chance of winning real, any real trophies. No, that's what but, I mean. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but um, there's no one there from the Poch era. No one. There Which from is the Poch surreal. Era. I know. Yeah. I know. I know. It is weird, actually. Um, <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> if we signed from the Poch era. Anthony, Jermaine Defoe's just texted me. He's not happy. <laughs> Mate, I was, you literally stole the words out of my mouth. JD, was... he was, uh, right, he was number, he's definitely number six. Because <laughs> I, I had two options. JD, I love you, man. He says, that's it, you're finished. No, <laughs> don't say that, JD, he's a ledge. <laughs> <laughs> then you've got Keno, yeah. then you've got yeah, loads. just loads of players. Hey, we gave you the impossible task. If there was a worse <laughs> signings, I'd be here all day. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Anthony, thank you for doing thank that. You. Um, we are going to pick up now on Alexander Lacazette. We spoke a lot about him on Good Morning Transfers. Atletico Madrid executives, they're meeting with PSG over the transfer of their striker, Edison Cavani. If they can't get a deal done for Cavani, though, Atletico are considering a move for Lacazette. And they're not the only players involved that could also involve a potential swap with Thomas Lamar. We did have lengthy debate earlier, so we decided to make Lacazette the subject of stay or go. So, boards at the ready oh panel. Vote now. JD, I don't know if you need to vote, because I think we already know your no. answer, but should Lacazette stay at Arsenal or should he go? What do you think, guys? Easy one, I think. There this we go. is not... Right, I actually was wondering if we were going to have a clean sweep of stays, judging by our conversation But of course, earlier. there's always one. Always one. But JD, <laughs> I'm going to start with you, because you are very much just, team stay. I just said it, like, right now, Arsenal's in a rebuilding sort of transition, and it would make no sense with the direction that you want to go in with under the new Mikel Arteta tutelage or, or time as manager for you to sell one of your best players. And in fact, he is not only one of your best players, one of your leaders off the pitch, and also a fan favourite. This is about rebuilding, this is about changing the sort of dynamic between the fans and the players in the right sort of direction. And selling Alexander Lacazette at this moment right now would be, in the famous words, one of my favourite rappers, ludicrous. <laughs> Just I think, yeah, why would it not? Well, I think we also need to explain the rules of the game to JD. It's not. It's about whether he should go. It's not about whether the club should sell him. Look, Fans the fact of the matter is, he lives said, in London. You've just said. You've just said. <laughs> you've just said that the club are in rebuild. Mm -hmm. Alexander Lacazette deserves more than that. He's a top, top-class striker. 
that hasn't really had the chance to prove how good he is while Arsenal have been in transition. Go to Atletico Madrid, go and be a star, son. Go and be the number nine that they lack. He will start and he will score goals under the tutelage of Diego Simeone. I mean, come on, what a manager to play for. Oh, and also Champions League football. Alex, on paper, Mike, <laughs> drop. <laughs> Did you? Are you no, not at all. So? You say go and be a star, but he's clearly seen as a star in Arsenal fans' eyes, or in, at least in yours, anyway. I just, JD. Look, I just as a that's neutral, not, that's not recent, as no? a complete and utter <laughs> okay, neutral, I'm just telling you, Alexander Lacazette, in terms of as a player, is is loved, beloved by those Arsenal fans. And the partnership he's got with Pierre Emerick Aubameyang as well, that's really important. And the way Mikel Arteta is finding a way to play them both, I think it's an exciting time after, under Arteta. And yeah, definitely yeah. stay. Mark, your team stay as well. Uh, yeah. And I'll just finish with the European Championships are in six months' time. Do not move clubs unless you are out of the team and out of form. Stay where you are and get yourself on the plane and be a part of the France squad because that's what's key. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Tony on your own. Yeah, <laughs> sorry I'm used to that. that. Yeah. Don't worry about it. But I enjoyed that though. Shock. That was fun. Going yeah, back well, and forth. He's back now, isn't he? <laughs> Arsenal fans, do let us know what you think. Hashtag transfer talk at Sky Sports News. Plenty still to come this afternoon. Next, we'll have the latest on Southampton, and we're also going to be putting Anthony on the spot if we haven't done already. <laughs> Yeah, welcome back to Transfer Talk. Good to have you. Anthony Costa is still with us yeah. this afternoon. And Anthony, we've decided to have a little bit of fun with uh, some of Blue's back catalogue. I hope you don't mind. No, not at all. Um, we're going to each pick one of your hits. OK. And what we want you to do is relate it to a current Tottenham player. Right, OK. That cool. makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Right, I'm going to kick things off with All Rise. Who gets you on your feet, Anthony? Got to be Hyunmin Son, isn't it? When he's running down that wing, he's taking players on, he gets you to huh? all rise. Absolutely. <laughs> 20 years we wrote that song today. Yeah. See, that, that makes me feel incredibly <laughs> old. We're talking about how many concerts I've been to, so that means I, I was, what, 15? We won't go there, will no, we? we? <laughs> yeah, right. no, I think we should. How many concerts have you been to? 16, was it? No, seven. I seven. Think. Seven. <laughs> Which was your favourite? Right, let's move on. <laughs> uh, Anton. It's, no. not, it's Mark. Next Mark, time. sorry. Mark. It was Mark's name. It's getting me all confused. Right, Mark. <laughs> sorry. And you've gone red as well. Uh, my favourite blue song without question, and this was difficult because there are many great songs. Brilliant, thank you. Uh, fly by. Fly by, let's go for fly by. Here we go. Fly by, fly by, bye by. Yeah, it's got to be Ericsson, Ericsson, isn't it? Yeah, I think he's on his way out. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's, that's great. That's so a fly, great choice. Fly, flying to Italy. Flying to Italy, and yeah. What's the next one? Anton's right, next. yeah, that's me. Sorry, yeah. Um, well, I, I remember you guys standing around a piano with Elton John oh, singing yes. Sorry seems to Talk be the hardest Watford word. Spurs, yeah. Yeah. So that, and that can sum up a lot of Spurs players and managers. <laughs> yeah, but which one have you picked? It's got to be Mr Ericsson himself, Ericsson I think. Again. Oh, yeah. Now, yeah. Do, do you feel in a way like he's, he's off? But the he's, fans did love him for, for a few years, didn't they? Well, listen, I, I was a massive fan of him, I still am. But I think it's time for him to move on. Yep. And I think when, when there was a clip of him waving to the fans the other night, it should have been Sorry seems to be the hardest word playing over the top. <laughs> OK, now this one's a fan's favourite. One love. Who would be your one love? One love. Oh, I mean, Mr Harry Kane himself. Ah. Here we go. The ledge. Oh. Absolute ledge. Yeah. Missed by Spurs at the moment, of course. Yeah, yeah, we are missing him, so that's why we need another striker. But, uh, yeah, it's got to be one of our own, Mr, Mr. Harry Kane. Oh, OK, and, and I'm not going to lie to you, I was more of a So Solid Crew fan growing up, so... <laughs> <laughs> You've got 21 seconds now. Yeah, so, like, for me, I mean, I think I did, you did have one hit that I thought I remembered. I was Go singing on, it earlier, and these lot were laughing, so I'm just going to shoot out there, like, get on up. When you're down. Uh, and hang like, on. Isn't that your group, no, mate? No? That's no, five. No. That's five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tried to shoot oh, him. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> don't give, don't give my mate any your air time. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> so who are you picking for your keep on moving? It's got to be Mr Mourinho, isn't it? He's moved from different clubs. He's got different teams playing. He's won the, he's won the lot and hopefully he can won, win stuff with us. Mr how, how impressed have you been with him so far? I mean, you know, he's made... It's been tough, hasn't it? Because he's made, mm. trying to make changes, but yeah. he's now got the January window. But he yeah. came in, Ben Davis injured, Hugo Lloris was already injured, injured yeah. Sissoko injured, injured, Kane injured. It's, it's not been an easy start. No, it's not been an easy wire for him. And obviously everyone thought that he'd come and part the bus. But I think obviously we've lost a few games here and there. But the football I've seen, and starting, everyone's starting to embed in, in, his, in his belief. And I think give him time, give him the summer budget as well, rebuild and go for it again. Now, the fans love Maurizio Pochettino. There is yeah. absolutely no doubt yeah, about that. Yeah. However, have you been impressed by Mourinho's press conference? Yeah. I know you watch every day, you love it every... <laughs> yeah. but have you been impressed by what he's been saying? He seems like the old Mourinho, that sort of 
laugh for a minute, having a bit of a giggle, but still a serious point to, to what he's trying to say. Um, obviously, when he was at United, he didn't seem that happy, but he seems really happy now. He's got a great, great haircut and he looks wicked with grey hair. How many players, realistically, do you think Spurs need this January window? Because they've got the FA Cup, the Champions League and the top four. They need to get back in that top four. Yeah, we do need to get into the top four. I think, uh, off the top of my head, it'll be, have to be four players. A defensive midfielder, another centre mid and a striker to back up Mr Kane. You talk because about there's a lot of games coming up, well, Absolutely. Mate. I mean, you mentioned Harry Kane. He, he could be out for the season. Yeah. He could. Mm. Obviously, no one hopes so, because with the Euros coming yeah, up exactly. as well. How big a miss will he be? Because there was talk last year that, oh, Spurs are better without him. It's not true, is it? Not true. No, no, no. We, we, we play great when he's with us and great without him. So he is a, a pinnacle part of our plans and, and, and moving forward. So he has to stay, um, but we do need backup for him. I remember a time when we had four strikers and we used to sit back and go, oh, we don't want to upset anyone. Now we've got no strikers mm. apart from, you know, <laughs> no one. So <laughs> we, we broke earlier uh, this night. So Diamond Chef, my colleague, saying that yeah. Zay Louise is of Tottenham's interest, has potentially been offered to Tottenham Hotspur. I don't know much You were looking him. at him in the reception. Oh, you well, were already he, looking... He scored a couple of good goals, yeah. but uh, again, Kenny, I want a premiership-proven player that's done it already here and can come in and, you know, hit, hit the ground running. Fernando Llorente, a bit of a hero for Spurs last season yeah, in the Champions yeah, League. Yeah, that yeah. little assist for Lucas Moura and the goal at Manchester City, yeah. but surely the time's passed there, isn't time's it? Time's passed for Mr Llorente. Yeah, mate, I, 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 think he's, I think he's moved on. We need a good young striker um, that, that knows the Premier League. Right, finally, I know you, well, you're here as a Spurs fan, but yes. you're also here because of the music. Every, you yeah. know, we all love Blue. What was your favourite single of all time? Wow. Um, it's got to be One Love. Yeah. Yeah, because it's all about that. Yeah. Lovely. <laughs> Sing a bit. <laughs> no, no, it's no. kind of funny. <laughs> 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 this is random. I'm here, yeah, mate. It's so, great. Joe, there you go. Went a bit of One Love. <laughs> Breathe easy. Enjoyed. That was my favourite. Oh, yeah. A bit left field there, but yeah, that's you were playing yeah. it this that morning, was, I was playing it this morning Loved just it. to get in the mood. <laughs> <you> know, <but laughs> anyway, right. <laughs> and, <laughs> a lot of confessions coming out here. <laughs> Anthony's right. This is weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. It's great. It's, it's about football and music together. Yeah. <laughs> Very weird. So that is why we are going to swiftly move on. We're going to talk about Southampton. And Mark, there is a few things to bring us up to speed with. What's going on at Southampton? Yeah, it's uh, revitalised Southampton. I think it's uh, safe to say. Quite incredible the turnaround in form. Um, after that disappointing result at home to Leicester. But right now, all the fans want to know what's happening in the transfer window. One thing I love about going down to Southampton and Ralph Hasenhutl's press conferences is he's always open and honest. And it's so refreshing to have a manager that speaks his mind, doesn't really hide behind things, and he tells you actually what you want to know. I was at a press conference with the Saints boss a few weeks ago and he said they were looking for two players in this window. He actually put a, a figure on it, which is rare. He wants two players. We know those players to both be full-backs, a left-back and a right-back. And as we've revealed on Sky Sports News over the course of the last few days, they are interested in Kyle Walker's Peters from Tottenham. That is a potential deal that could happen. Um, and another player they've been linked with, Joe Bryan from Fulham. So there's two full-backs there, a left-back and a right-back, and they are very much on the radar of Ralph Haas and Hootel and Southampton. And JD, Kyle Walker-Peters, you think he would be a good fit for Southampton? Well, initially, we, obviously, we reported in this window that it was Kyle Walker-Peters was maybe favourable to go on loan. To, yeah. I think it was to Crystal Palace as well who was interested yeah. in him. But now with the reports coming out that we know that Spurs are more looking to move him on a permanent basis, that does kind of put Southampton as the front runners. And interestingly enough, I kind of look at Walker-Peters' career and think about 22 years old or so in the fullback positions, quite versatile, can play both left and right fullback. But it's more of a, with the sale of Kieran Trippier last summer, this really was his window to kick on. This really was his window to maybe leave an impression on both managers. And it would be kind of confusing maybe to him in terms of his career. Maybe it is best that he starts again, that he hasn't had a chance to maybe get as many starts, or as many uh, chances with the first team as he probably would have liked. Only five chances this year. So I think assessing himself, assessing the situation at Southampton, it would probably be a good move for him. And he'd fit into the philosophy. You know all about Southampton's academy. The young players, they like to bed into the first team and give the opportunity in the Premier League. So he's very much in that mould and would fit into that setup. Uh, another interesting point on Southampton in this window as well, you've seen it over the course of the summer, they've let a lot of players go, particularly those that are high earners. Um, and it's very much 
my understanding uh, that Shea Adams will go nowhere in this window. We know he's not had the greatest season since his move in the summer from Birmingham, but he is very much still in Ralph Hasenhutl's plans and he will not be leaving the Southampton exit over the course of January. It takes time, doesn't it, to adapt to Premier League life. Obviously, we've seen with like Ollie McBurney, did the business for Sheffield United last season, helped get them promoted. This season, he's shown that it's, it's difficult. It's such a big step between the Championship and the Premier League. So it's great to hear that Shea Adams wants to fight for his place. And I think it's telling that Ralph Hasenhutl doesn't want to let him go out on loan. He does see him as part of his future plans. Obviously, all the headlines at the minute have been on Danny Ings because he is in incredible form. But things can change fairly quickly. And I think um, he's right, right to be staying there. I mean, yeah, the Neil Mopé was another standout player in the Championship last season. On the other hand, though, he has managed to show that he can take the step up to Brighton, but it doesn't work quite so easily for every player. And it's about management. You look at what Ralph's done to those individual players and Danny Ings, like you say, the standout player but I think the gaffer has to take a lot of credit for the way he's revitalized that that team because it really was on it knee on its knees at one stage you looked at Southampton and you went I don't see them scoring goals I don't see them getting out of this this is going to be a tough yeah. season and then they got thrashed 9-0 by Manchester City it, and, and it everything all turned changed they're three points off the European places I know, wow. what a difference. that is absolutely a few, staggering you know a few games but made. it's, it's yeah. fascinating so Ralph Hasenhutl is the biggest presser in the Premier League it's not Jurgen Klopp it's Southampton and what he did after that game, he went into the changing room and he basically just told them, look, we're going to have, there's only one way to get out of this, and that is to run, it's to push, it's to press. If you don't want to feel like this again, this is how we're going to get out of it. Mm -hmm. And it's worked. They hit rock bottom, but he found a way to get them back. At a time, remember, during December, when there's so many games and so many players are tiring, Southampton stepped up. Mm -hmm. Their fitness level stepped up. It's incredible what he's managed to do with that group of players, physically as well as mentally. Yeah, and is Southampton one of those teams where this window it could be just really important that they keep hold of this group of players? Actually, more important than bringing in players. Yeah, definitely. I, I mean, it's interesting because Southampton, you know, their transfer strategy is limited by the decisions of previous regimes and the big players they brought on and big fees and big contracts. That so they haven't really got a lot of manoeuvring to do. Like Cedric Suarez is out, is out of contract in the summer, isn't he? Mm. That's why they're looking at bringing in a fullback now. It's more about adding one or two places because they know people, members of that squad will drift out as the contracts expire, as players leave over the next couple of years. So finding players to actually come in immediately is quite difficult for Southampton. But now they're in a much better place to attract players because they're mid-table and they're not down the bottom of the league. And of course, they lost their director of football in Rolfs Wilson to Rangers as well in November. So that is another spanner in the works. You, you lose the man that appointed the manager that, that oversees the transfer structure and philosophy. He joins another football club and suddenly you've got to replace him and look at buying players in January transfer window. So that's what is even more remarkable about the way Southampton have gone about their business. They're very structured, they know what they want and they're getting things right on the pitch as well. I just love players that like, literally buy into the manager system and I think it's yeah. so effective, that stat that we spoke about in terms of the running statistics that is so vital that I mean that's a team that believes in their manager and it's all set by even though Danny Ings is getting all of these goals him and Shane Long are the pinnacle points they literally trigger all of that immediate press that they do from the start and from then it's a, it's a knock-on effect and it's fantastic to kind of watch to see yeah just very quickly West Ham uh, they've completed the sign of Darren Randolph on a three and a half year contract from Middlesbrough Anton though a bit of work to do in terms of reinforcing do you think well, I, look, I mean I think they need a holder midfielder that's what West Ham will probably go out and tell you they've got so many attacking midfielders but at the moment there's so much pressure on Declan Rice that it, you know Mark Noble and Jack Wilshire are fantastic but they, they need help they need options in that in that midfield position that's what they're going to be targeting next but Randolph's a fantastic signing so it'll be, you know, they needed an experienced goalkeeper. And the longest medical in history, as Jonathan <laughs> Woodgate called it, has now been completed. Yeah. Darren Randall finally has got his move. There was obviously a big concern over his, his fitness, um, but he has uh, got the deal done and the longest medical finished. Yeah. Yeah, well, that is us finished for the day. <laughs> We've run out of time here on Transfer Talk. Uh, my thanks to JD, to Mark, to Alice and to Anton, as well as to Michael and to Anthony. <laughs> We've got to play the music in. Oh, no. But yeah, thank you so much for your company this thank afternoon. You We've enjoyed us. it. I hope you've enjoyed it as well. Thank you. I've loved it. Loved Great. It. We'll hopefully see you again. And we will be back. Good Morning Transfers returns tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Make sure you tune back in for that. And then Transfer Talk, that returns tomorrow. That is from midday. We'll be joined by DJ and YouTuber Flex United on the show. And Arma Chef and Cavi Solik will return with the transfer show. That continues at 7 o'clock tonight.
Yeah, and coming up right here on Sky Sports News. Make sure you stay with us. You can keep right up to date with all the latest transfer news. That clock is ticking right down. Uh, there is a Fernandez at Tottenham, but will we see one at Manchester United? Lots of people getting in touch about Manchester United's business. They just want to see Bruno Fernandez sign. Lots of people as well questioning Christian Eriksen and whether or not he would be a good fit at Manchester United and why they're not going in for that. We will see you again at nine o'clock tomorrow. Once again, thank you to the transfer team. And I think it's only right that we all rise yeah. for a certain yeah. Mr. Yeah. Anthony Costa. Thank it. you very much. It. Thank you so much.